you know, I used to have really bad ulcers in college. I just wish I would have known back then what I know now, because there is a very simple remedy. But ultimately, you have to correct your diet, because if you had your diet being corrected, you would never get the ulcer in the first place. So what is an ulcer? Well, it's not a minor thing. It's a major thing. It's a hole in your stomach or your small intestine where the lining has broken down. Now, there are many theories about what causes an ulcer uh, from stress, nutritional deficiencies to um, a microbe called H. pylori, helicobacter pylori, and of course, the side effects from taking NSAIDs, which are medications. But today, I'm going to show you a remedy that can really help you get rid of an ulcer. In college, I had it so bad, I would be waking up in the middle of the night with this gnawing, dull, burning pain in my stomach that would only be relieved if I ate something. And of course, the way I dealt with it was mega, mega amounts of Tums, which is calcium carbonate, like limestone. So I do know what it feels like to have this condition and it's not very pleasant. Now, the most popular remedy for ulcers would be Prilosec, which is a PPI, a protein pump inhibitor type medication in which it stops the acid production. And I'm not saying it doesn't work. It does work. It does help people, no doubt. But there's some slight minor complications. These are called side effects, like gas, vomiting, nauseousness, headache, abdominal pain, increased risk of dementia, increased risk of the infection C. diff, increased risk of pneumonia, bone fractures from osteoporosis, and polyps and kidney inflammation. But other than that, it's totally safe. So the question is, are there safer alternatives than these medications? Now, one study was an animal study uh, comparing the medication called omeprazole to cabbage juice. And the study demonstrated that the group that took the cabbage juice for ulcers showed an 83% improvement versus an 81% group with the medication group. So it was only slightly better, but without the side effects. In another study involving the comparison of the medication cimetidine to cabbage showed that the group that consumed cabbage healed their ulcers in 15 days compared to 28 days in the group that took the medication. So let's talk a little bit about cabbage. What is in this cabbage that helps ulcers? Well, they isolated it down to this vitamin U. Now, vitamin U is not really a vitamin. It's a term used to describe a group of sulfur compounds, okay? These are plant-based compounds with an S because there's quite a few of them and they're made from sulfur. So this group of compounds are called glucosinolates. Now, what's very interesting about glucosinolates is that it has a very potent effect to dismantle and destroy H. pylori, one of the most commonly found microorganisms involved with ulcers. So this is probably why cabbage works so well with ulcers. Now, the real question is, why do you have H. pylori? Well, I did a video on this, and in a normal person, um, H. pylori is not acting in a pathogenic form. And apparently when your acids go too low and you don't have enough stomach acid, so the pH is going higher, more alkaline, when the stomach should be between one and three, very, very acidic, this microbe tends to overgrow and becomes pathogenic and starts to create ulcers. And so here the person is left with the treatment of getting rid of the acid. That's the very thing that triggered this infection in the first place. And so originally, and this is my own point of view, ulcers were created by a lack of acid, not an excess amount of acid. And then these H. pylori microbes started growing, and then you get the ulcer. So cabbage apparently will put these things either in remission or kill them. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know about cabbage. If you cook it too much, you'll destroy this chemical compound. So you can do raw cabbage juice. Okay, that will work. And it doesn't matter if the cabbage is green or red, it'll work the same. You can use steamed cabbage because apparently you can retain 97% of this compound 
if you steam it, just don't overcook it. So steaming is one way to consume cabbage. Or you can ferment cabbage as sauerkraut. Now, one tiny problem with fermenting cabbage is it does reduce this compound, but you then get all these additional beneficial uh, friendly bacteria when you consume sauerkraut. You get the prebiotics, which is a fiber that feed your microbes. So there's really four ways I would recommend consuming cabbage. Just eating it raw in some salad or some dish, um, fermenting it as sauerkraut, steaming it, or juicing it, which you'd probably get the most concentrated form of this phytonutrient. The next video I think you should watch would be on sauerkraut. There's so many benefits to sauerkraut. I think this would be a really important video. Check it out.